Now, in the second module, we're talking about how to define a computation approach with PCI Lab. So having some data, how to do that. Uh, a computation approach is a definition of what you want to calculate. And uh, because you're constructing a data structure that describes everything that you want to do computationally, it's a rather complicated thing, or it can become complicated. Uh, basically, any approach refers to a BCI paradigm. So um, one out of those that are predefined. So for example, this approach down here uh, says, I want to use the common spatial patterns paradigm, CSP. And secondly, optionally, you can pass in parameters that customize this paradigm. The paradigm always has defaults for everything in, uh, from the get-go. So you, you don't have to pass anything. But to adapt it to your problem, you would go on and pass in parameters. And specifically, the parameters are the parameters of the calibrate function of your paradigm. So your paradigm is a class that has a calibrate function. And that function has some arguments. And these are the parameters that, are, that you may use here. And the approach is a salary, as you see. You know, So you select paradigm, you pass in parameters. Rather simple story. Uh, now, talking about the parameters themselves. Um, they are generally lists of name value pairs. Uh, everything else would be too confusing, basically. And uh, usually, um, the parameters are sort of nested into parameters and subparameters, so just to keep it organized. For example, the CSP paradigms calibrate function has a parameter is called prediction, sort of a top level parameter. Um, and this prediction parameter has a subparameter among others, which is called machine learning. And um, you could put a value here and assign something to the machine learning parameter of the prediction parameter, and go on and assign more stuff to other things in the quote prediction department. And now there is no general rule for what parameters a BCI paradigm has. That's, as I say here, the business of the BCI paradigm. If you have a custom thing that has no notion of prediction functions or so, that wouldn't have this parameter. However, Almost all parameters in the toolbox, sorry, almost all paradigms in the toolbox have two top level parameters. And one is called signal processing and one is called prediction. The signal processing parameter governs everything that happens in your signal processing pipeline, which filters, how are they being set up, and so on. The prediction parameter governs everything that happens at the prediction stage, the prediction function. And implicitly, also, how to calibrate that, how to determine the parameters of that, how to do the machine learning that gives rise to the prediction function and so on. So it's usually these two. Uh, and the only ex exceptions are probably some custom user contributed things. Importantly, uh, if you don't know what parameters something has, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between what you can use in the script and what you see in the GUI for a given par par paradigm. So if you uh, say, I want to um, uh, make a new approach for a given paradigm, say CSP, and you get the GUI, you see uh, this panel here, um, which has this top level parameter, here's signal processing parameter. And then there are several subparameters to that, you know, EOG removal, resampling, and so on and so on. And this one has a sub subparameter, if you will, that's a particular, you know, how you want to apply this resampling, which sampling rate, and so on. And uh, here are some more. So you see that it's a hierarchy. And if you're in doubt, you can always kind of go back to the GUI and just look them up and, uh, and then type them in. Also, of course, they are documented in the functions. But uh, because functions call other functions and sometimes expose the other functions parameters, it might mean that you have to chase through several layers of functions until you find the actual name. So it's, unless you really know where to look, um, it's probably easiest to just go in, into the GUI. And furthermore, uh, as I said already, everything has a default value. So for example, uh, this par paradigm here happens to have resampling enabled by default. And it by default resembles to 100 hertz and so on. And this one is by default disabled. So OK, these parameters can be on off, for example. And uh, also, uh, there's help for everyone. So uh, fundamentally, down here, you always see the help text for any parameter, uh, easily overlooked, of course. So um, let me see what I wanted to say here. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Um, the signal processing parameter of a paradigm lists several subparameters, as I said. And these have some names, uh, such as fi filter or so. 
And there is a place where these names are specified, and that's right in the plugin. The, the specific, you know, the FIR filter function, which is, here's an excerpt of that, defines it as a property. So uh, sometimes it may not be uh, exactly clear, you know, in the GUI you see FIR filter, you know, aha, uh -huh, this is what I'm typing in. Where's the function for that? Uh, it's the function that declares this name, although the function itself might be called flt underscore fir.m or something like that. But fundamentally, of course, all the filters are in one directory. So uh, furthermore, um, this directory where they are is code slash filters, and they all begin with flt underscore. So generally, when you're searching for a function, this is where to search. There is another group of functions that process signals in some way, but they don't transform the actual data, really. They just change the metadata. They change the channel order or things like that. These are called data set editing functions. Start with set underscore uh, and are in the code slash data set editing folder. So uh, and the signal processing parameter might include s multiple combinations of you know, some filters and some data set editing. But you'll, you will see this when you encounter it. Yeah, uh, and um, the, the um, parameters that you, the list of, of things that you assign to a subparameter is basically just directly the parameters that this function would be able to take. So um, all of these by default accept name value pairs as documented and so on. Um, so you can also kind of start and bootstrap yourself from, from the scripts and from these folders to know what you want to pass in and, and skip the GUI if you want to. So uh, here's an example for that. So I'm making a new approach. I say I want to use a CSP paradigm, okay, but I want to use a different frequency band. So I say I assign something to the signal processing parameter and overwrite some defaults. Line break here, and um, that's a group. It has multiple subparameters, and I want to overwrite something for the FIR filter subparameter. And this happens to have a subparameter, which is the frequencies. And if you look at the function FLT underscore FIR, you see this also documented. And it has a bunch of others, like for example, is it a band pass or low pass, high pass filter, and so on. That's probably called filter mode. So uh, that's basically all. And also, if the filter wasn't enabled in the paradigm before, now that you've specified it, it is going to be, quote, enabled. Otherwise, it would have, I think, empty assigned to it. Um, talking about this empty, if you want to disable something, say resampling, um, you can pass in the empty numerical array. So you say, here's the paradigm that I want to use, but I want to turn some stage off. Just pass it in this way. It, it has to be numeric. Uh, so if you pass an empty cell array, it would basically mean use, <laughs> use the resampling filter, but pass no arguments into the resampling filter. So use all the defaults that a resampling filter would by default use. Uh, you can also pass in the strings on or off. I, I'm not sure if I have this here. Um, but if you, as long as you manage to memoize this rule, um, you're going to be fine. There's a few shortcuts for to make this whole specification a bit shorter, right? And the idea is, um, when when you want to override just the first argument of some function like a filter, you can instead of going on with a set array where you say, I want to override the sampling rate and set it to 200 in the resampling parameter. You can also directly put that value here. Um, and basically, then it's implicitly understood as, you know, as array, um, which assigns this to the first argument, basically. So just generally, there are shortcuts, and they are basically as you would expect. Of course, this is pretty intuitive here. Uh, you can um, do it, it goes all across the toolbox. So you can uh, basically use this kind of simplification everywhere. So uh, here is the long form. Um, signal processing, resampling, sampling rate. That corresponds to what we had in the GUI you know, a couple of pictures ago. Uh, there is, there is, a, there is a, uh, a kind of parameter that we haven't talked about yet, which is uh, quite useful. So there's parameters that allow you to pick multiple options sort of with subparameters. And a good example is independent component analysis. So this is a very big part of PCI Lab and very strong area of of the Schwartz Center. And so we have lots of variants of this. Uh, so in signal processing, the ICA, there's a subparameter named variant. It has subparameters itself. But importantly, it can be as set to fast ICA or Infomax or Emica or whatever. And fast ICA has different subparameters as Emica. 
and has different subparameters, is InfoMax and so on. So ultimately, what you do for a parameter like this is you say which case you want, in this case, a fast IC case, and then you can go on and say how you want to override the defaults if you want to override the defaults. So uh, in, in a script, the way in which this would work is you're assigning something to the variant parameter. Here's the variant parameter. And the first thing in the cell array is the value for the selection. It's kind of a selector. Uh, so whenever you see in the GUI something like this, um, you need to say which case you want. In this case, it would be fast ICA. And then you can go on and override whatever subparameters just happens to have this variant. A max iterations, approach symmetric, or something like that. So uh, that's multi-option parameters. Uh, there's, you know, there are not too many occurrences of that in BCI, but for example, IC, uh, ICA or machine learning and so on have these kinds of things. Here are a few more examples. Um, uh, one popular example is in machine learning, there's the learning function here called learner. And that is also a multi-option parameter because there's linear discriminant analysis, quadratic discriminant analysis, or just regression and all these things. And all of these have, of course, different, different sub-parameters. You know, LDA has different parameters than logistic regression. And uh, here's an example. You know, you see uh, a particular paradigm might have a prediction area department, and it has machine learning specifically. And a learner function, it's set to QDA. And uh, this thing happens to have a parameter that is here set to true, the weighted bias one. And if you wanted to replicate this kind of setting in the script, you would say, I want to build an approach that uses the CSP paradigm. And under prediction, machine learning, learner, I want to set this to the QDA case, like here. And I want to override also one of the subparameters here to, to true weighted bias. There is one more shortcut. And this is um, in the case of a multi-option parameter. Instead of putting this string into a cell array, you, you can also omit the cell array. So in this case, here I say I set the learner argument to QDA and don't override anything else. So I can save myself the cell array and, and the whole rest. I just put in the string itself. BCI will know um, what to put in. What's interesting is um, the same stuff also applies to any other toolbox that uses this argument system. So for example, SIFT has the same rules if you want to script things with SIFT, although um, SIFT is very GUI heavy. So there you usually don't have to uh, ever construct these things yourself. But the same shortcuts also can be applied there. Note that you never have to do that. You can always strictly write it all out um, to configure a pipeline, say. But most of the time, you will be tempted to save yourself the time, of course. And that's the end of the approach definition module.